to start streaming. I'm already recording, so let's see uh, where we're at here. Um, no indication that we're doing anything yet. From yep, there, there's the notification, so we should be live. Yep, it says we're live. All right, so cool. I don't know if uh, it says there are three people waiting. I know one of those is me. So here we are. Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good whatever time of night or day it happens to be, wherever you happen to be. Welcome to Republic News with your hostess Liviana. I am your hostess Liviana, and this is Lives Precincts Episode Seven, PB Jointly and the Gold Stopwatch. You can look all that up to figure out what it means, because I ain't telling you. Ha ha. So. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of news first, and then I have a couple of guests here who will hopefully chime in on some of the news, because I don't have a lot to talk about tonight. Um, I did have something more planned, but recent developments have, uh, have uh, you know, I haven't really caught, caught up quite yet with everything that has happened, so I know a bit, and I'm getting some info from these guys. But I want to start off with something that uh, we talked about when Anahata was my co-hostess uh, a couple of weeks ago. So back, uh, back then, we had an article that we discussed about how Harris County was going to try to stop the robot brothel, which was planned to open near the Galleria. And that was from the Houston Chronicle. And again, we have an article uh, this week from the Houston Chronicle. It was uh, published on Tuesday, the 23rd of October, 2008. It's by Zach Despart, and the title is Harris County Adopts New SOB <laughs> Rules to Preempt Robot Brothels. Okay, so Harris County Commissioner's Court on Tuesday unanimously adopted new rules to prevent so-called robot brothels from opening and more strictly regulate sexually oriented businesses in unincorporated areas. The county already had been revising its sexually oriented business rules, first adopted in 1996, but decided to specifically address lifelike sex dolls for rent after Toronto-based company Kinky's Dolls uh, considered opening a Houston branch where patrons could try out human-like adult love dolls in private rooms at the shop. The dolls, unlike their inflatable forebears, are made of synthetic skin and have highly articulated skeletons. Houston City Council earlier this month amended its sexually oriented, uh, sexually oriented business rules hmm, to include, I guess to include, this, uh, you know, I... I editing people editing uh, to include robot brothels in its ban on arcades and theaters. City inspectors in September stopped construction of the Kinky's Dolls storefront at Richmond and Chimney Rock saying the project lacked proper permits. No company has expressed interest in opening such an establishment in Harris County but court members said they wanted to eliminate that possibility in the future. Kinky's Dolls did not respond to a request for comment Tuesday. Assistant County Attorney Selena Vinson said the county largely adopted language Houston's legal department had written. She said, quote, We wanted to address the sex robot shop that was allegedly going to open in the city and wanted to ensure our regulations were consistent with what the city of Houston was doing. End quote. The changes now clearly define sex dolls like the ones advertised by the Toronto firm as, quote, anthropomorphic devices, end quote, and prohibit companies from renting them out to customers. Residents of the city and county remain free to purchase such devices for use in their own homes. Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez praised the new rules for their clarity, which he said will allow deputies to more aggressively target illicit red light businesses that largely operate in the shadows. He said, quote, Before, everything was lumped together and was ambiguous. Now that's no longer the case. The sheriff said he is pleased the new rules, which take effect January 1st, explicitly ban sexual services at massage parlors and clearly define adult motels, theaters, bookstores, and cabarets. A vice squad with seven deputies and a sergeant works closely with Houston police to enforce the regulations. Um, Harris uh, 
Harris County has two licensed sexually oriented businesses. Both are strip clubs that fall under the cabaret rules. Uh, St. James and Houston Dolls, which are on the same street off Interstate 45 in North Harris County. The permit has expired for a third, Joy of Houston, in Jersey Village. And Vinson said the county attorney's office on Wednesday will ask a judge to shut down the club. He said more, close, more county establishments may need to apply for sexually oriented business permits because the new rules aim to prevent topless clubs from masquerading as bikini bars, for example. Uh, she said, quote, we are hoping this amendment clears up any confusion about whether they need a permit or not. It's not as arguable to say I don't fit into this category, end quote. At the previous commissioner's court meeting October the 9th, anti-human trafficking advocates said allowing a so-called robot brothel to operate where patrons can have sex with lifelike dolls would make trafficking worse. The rules also now require permitted sexually oriented businesses to post signs displaying an educational information uh, poster, I guess, regarding human trafficking, including the National Human Trafficking Hotline. So, um, yeah, I'm a... I'm, I'm a bit gobsmacked that there are only two strip clubs in all of Houston. It's a vast, sprawling metropolis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quick question. Also, uh, my, um, my father li- lived above and worked out of Houston for well over 15 years. Uh, and I got to say, yeah, it it's true because of how some of the more religious aspects of their city council – yeah. Have set up the city within the past 30. It's it's been really really big on trying to get rid of the strip clubs. That's completely. really really messed uh, up. And you I had a question. a question. Yeah. Um I get brothels, I get cabarets, I get strip clubs. So what the hell do our case have to do with this? Because the, it's an extension of the whole, oh, these things lead to degeneracy. There's a biggest, a, a big, uh, how do I want to put this? Mainly they see it as gambling. So video games that are get what? Yeah, it's fucking yeah, stupid. It's stupid. It, it's oh, stupid, like- but it's how they've approached it. It's the same way people approached pinball machines for the longest time. I, I get like a game machine instead of a bar. That's that's a slot machine. But you know, you don't go into an arcade and there's a freaking slot machine there. Yeah, you you're not gonna game. you're not gonna win any money playing pinball or uh, Tetris or you know any of Miss Pac Man or whatever. <laughs> it's not gambling. Yeah, I mean. By that standard, you should close all the pizza places around around Texas. It's mm-hmm. like, what the hell? Yeah, I, I didn't say their approach was intelligent. I just said that that's their. Well, you know, Houston is a weird kind of situation. I grew up there, and um, it's it's it kind of goes back and forth between very liberal and very conservative. So you you kind of have. Um, pretty liberal Democrats on some occasion in charge of the city, and then on other occasions you've got very almost reactionary (laughs) Republicans in charge that that tend to be, you know, Baptist-ridden, like the state government. I mean, Greg Abbott, which we're going to talk about Greg Abbott in a little bit, but um, Greg Abbott is a Roman Catholic, but the majority of the Texas state government is uh, made up of Southern Baptists, as far as I can tell. Um, so it's, it's a really strange yeah. situation yeah. in Houston. It, it kind of goes back and forth. It's not like Dallas or Austin where it's pretty standard liberal. Um, they they kind of stay liberal. Yeah. I bet yeah. they hate that one Catholic guy. How dare you be a papist? I'm also religious. Do you know that? It's always been this weird yeah. thing in America of, uh, you know, oh, we can't have a Catholic president. We still take orders from the Pope. Well, they don't do that much anymore. The Baptists, the Southern Baptists were really probably the most anti-Catholic. But in the past uh, 25 years or so, they've kind of 
formed an alliance in order to combat abortion. And as a result, the Baptists have also now started opposing birth control. Uh, it's not official in their yeah. confession of faith, yeah. but it is something that they do oppose politically now, which is really strange. <laughs> Well, I mean, they, they've gone yeah. there and said, hey, you're just as reactionary as big as we are. You're our friend now. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they, they do tend to coalesce. I mean, if you take ISIS and the sort of uh, ultra right wing evangelical Christians in America, mentality, not that different. Not that different. Hey, let's kill people who don't agree with us. Um, okay. Uh, well, you know, well, the, uh, it, it, you I gotta, I gotta jump in here and correct you just a little bit here because evangelicals are not the same thing as fundamentalists. Our mainstream media tends to use the terms as if they were synonymous, and they're really not. Uh, yeah. Evangelicals used to be pretty tolerant. I mean, they would try to convert you through persuasion and stuff, but they weren't gonna you know, try to use the government to impose their religious bullshit on you, unlike mm -hmm. open fundamentalists who have a history of that. And then you've got the separatist fundamentalists who are like off doing their own thing and essentially say fuck everybody else. They're not going to mess with you yeah. politically. They're not going to try to... They just stay in their own communities and do their own thing. But they're even more um, intolerant and... and um, theologically conservative than the open fundamentalists. Now, as far as the theology, the evangelicals and both types of fundamentalists are pretty close together. They're all conservative theologically. But as far as how they deal with other people, that's where the difference comes in. Hello. Hello, Union Aerospace. Welcome back. Yeah, it's been, it's been long. Sorry for the for the absence, but the uh, shit happened. Let's yeah. Do that way. All right. Yeah. So anything else to say? Oh, oh, I did want to say one other thing. I'm just really confused about how they think a robot brothel is going to increase trafficking, uh, human trafficking, because robots aren't human, right? <laughs> they're, 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 they're taking the slippery slope approach to it. Mm. They think, oh, if you're going to do these horrible things to a facsimile of a human being that'll just make you want to do it to a real human being even more mm -hmm. also it's the whole sex before marriage thing i mean it's a robot it's just masturbation That's... man come on <laughs> i mean i mean it's technically that what you're yeah. all you're doing is basically you know, going against their big capitalist beliefs you know you're showing down a business because oh ew icky and on the other thing, you're just giving the mafia more business. All right? I mean, just... yeah. I mean, every every single time I hear someone say, uh, someone adult say icky or gross, I stop listening. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry, but I stop listening because because you already know where it's going already. Yeah. You already yeah, know it, where it's going. <laughs> it, it's. It's as ridiculous as a certain other argument I've heard lately. Oh, yeah. I mean, first, what? I'm like... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask uh, what argument he was talking about. Uh, namely, the whole thing about uh, lolly content. Um, namely, because I... I actually understand the cultural aspects in Japan about it. It's not so much underage characters. It's more a body type, a very common body type in Japan, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it's more like uh, you look kind of look like an underage kid, but you're not. Exactly. Exactly. Well, very flat-chested, very young-looking. Uh, it's basically girls who haven't really sprouted. They, they, they late bloomers, basically. But I mean, over the. I mean, my my the thing I think of Lalakan is this: it's strong. It's not real. Get over it. That's all. I... Yeah, I mean, I I know a bit about this stuff, not just because of my interest in anime, but. My wife likes lolly content. Mm-hmm. Uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
Okay. Well, so, let's uh, let's move on to the next yeah. story before we get to um, risque. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this article is from uh, the 24th, and I saved it as a PDF. Then I'm sure there's been updates since then because there have been new developments. This is from AP, uh, the Associated Press. Uh, crude pipe bombs sent to Obama, Clinton's CNN. No injuries by Michael Balsamo, Eric Tucker, and Colleen Wong. So, I mean, we all know that there were these pipe bombs that were sent to Hillary Clinton, uh, former President Obama, CNN, and others, intercepted Tuesday night and Wednesday in a rash of attacks two weeks before nationwide elections that could reshape Congress and serve as a referendum on the first two years of President Donald Trump's presidency. Now, since then, of course, there have been other uh, bombs that were received or sent out, uh, one to Joe Biden, supposedly, one to um, uh, Robert De Niro, the actor. Um, I forget now who all has received them. Um, the qu- no, Eric Holder's had one. uh they said something about a CD showing up at Diane Feinstein's office. Uh, oh. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, and Cuomo I, got... Cuomo, uh, Cuomo made up. Cuomo made up a bomb. He was so disappointed he didn't get one, really. <laughs> and then one of these guys, I think it was Biden, maybe? They said that his bomb had been misplaced. And I'm like, misplaced? How do you misplace a bomb? <laughs> you know? What the fuck? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let us say a thing. Did they, they, is the pipe bomb thing real? I thought it was a joke. Yeah, see, that was another thing that I've heard that these bombs were not actually bombs, they were just joke bombs meant to scare people or whatever. Yeah, the the detonators were miswired on purpose, apparently. Supposedly, there were intentional misspellings in some of the addresses as well. The one that was supposed to go to um, one of the targets actually went somewhere else. They all, uh, or at least some of them, had Debbie Wasserman Schultz's address as the return address. (laughs) Uh, was... I was about to say that Antifa was at uh, its shenanigans once again, but uh, but that be giving them too much credit, you know. I mean, what I find funny is that you know there were the sort of uh, pundits online saying, "Oh, you know, if this was a real uh, right wing thing, then why why weren't the why were the address so messed up?" It's like, yeah, because every terrorist in the world says, "In case this one explodes, it returns to this address." Right, right. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, how stupid do how stupid do people think terrorists are? You mm. usually don't leave traces of the murder or what something you do behind unless you know you're you're al Qaeda unless you're cases. trying to frame somebody. Yeah. So now there was earlier today before they caught the suspect, um, there was Chuck Todd from MSNBC claiming that it was Russia behind these pipe bombs. And I'm like, dude of if, course if, it's <laughs> fucking Russia. <laughs> if it were Russia people would be dead. That <laughs> Yeah, yes, I'm, yes, I'm really of course, it's, uh, it's got to be the Russians again, don't you know? Um, so then, uh, okay. uh, the, uh, Giovanna, I think if it was Russia, they would be sending in Nova Shock inside African. Pa- there would be people dead, though, that you can pretty yeah, much would, guarantee that. Poison, not bombs. Yeah. That's not their style. Their style is poison, not bombs. And the Russians. The and Russians don't fuck around. If they wanted somebody dead, <laughs> you know, the, it wouldn't It wouldn't be like, oh, this bomb is a joke. It would have been like kaboom or, or poison or whatever. Yeah. But um, so there was, an, uh, uh, there was a video from the Real and, News earlier. T- I think it was today. Um, and they were talking. Uh, they had uh, David Giroux on and were talking with him. And he was kind of rocking back and forth like a traumatized autistic child. And talking about fascism and stuff. So in reply to their video, I, I, I made a comment. I said, Bruce Ivins did it. And then I skipped down. And then I said, or did he? Come on, guys, you really think Trump's people or one of his supporters did this? I'm sure someone will be blamed, and that someone might even be connected to Trump somehow. 
but pay attention to the timing. The Democrats are set to do poorly in the midterms. We keep getting intimations that Mueller's investigation is probably not going to hurt Trump. So now Trump is going to launch a poison gas attack against his own citizen. Oh, wait, I, I got my big bad wolves confused there for a moment. Heck, Cuomo wanted a bomb so <laughs> Cuomo wanted a bomb so badly that he made one up. Why would he want a bomb so badly? Think about that. One of the alleged recipients has allegedly misplaced his bomb. This is a comedy of errors. Have any of these bombs exploded? Right before the midterms, timing is everything. Sure, it could be some deranged Alex Jones fan, but ask yourself this. Why hasn't Rachel Madcow received a bomb? And you use this news in an attempt to shame and scare us progressives and greens into coming back and supporting some feckless Democrat in the name of unity and stopping fascism as if Trump were some radical departure from what's been going on ever since Reagan moved into the White House, regardless of whether the administration were led by a Republican or a Democrat. That takes some gall. No thanks. I'll keep voting for members of the only, and I repeat, the only leftist political party in the United States with a snowball's chance, and that is the Green Party of the United States. The Democrats are in no way leftist. Sooner you guys get that through your heads, sooner you'll see what's really going on. They're Republicans, plain and simple. That's exactly what the Democratic Party is. It's the Republican Party. It's not even a mirror image. It just has a different colored jersey on. I guess those envelopes of white powder that got sent to Ted Cruz and a couple of other Republicans a few weeks ago are now to be completely forgotten. But if you think those were actual attacks and actually from someone out here among the citizenry, this is nothing but theater all being played, and the players, once you pull their masks off, you know, that elephant mask and that jackass mask, you can see they are identical twins. Oh, one of them might have a birthmark over his right eye, and the other one has the birthmark below his right eye, but apart from that, there is no difference. And you expect us to fall for argumentum ad metum and pretend one of the two warmongering authoritarian corporatist parties is on our side? Woo. I mean, let me tell you a thing. It's, be it's because Trump is literally worse than Hitler. Uh, like you said, <laughs> Trump is Trump. What is? What did you say? Trump is like uh, Silvio Berlusconi. That's that's who yeah, Trump is uh, most uh, like. To me, it will be. To me, it, it, it's. The, I, I, I do. I would like Democrats to win just to see Trump in the same position Obama was in the middle of his first term. It's like, you now you have to deal with an opposition, motherfucker. What are you going to do? Cry? Mm -hmm. um, he does a tweet of you saying that Obama is a pussy. So, you know, <laughs> like, Trump's tweets, they don't. <laughs> <work. laughs> you, find, you find a tweet of him criticizing Obama, now he's doing the exact same thing, more brazenly. At least Obama could at least, uh, Obama could at least sugarcoat it. This guy just pisses on it and says that. <laughs> he just piss. Come on, Obama put some effort into fucking sugarcoating a turd. You can't even be bothered. In fact, you just shit on the turd and then piss on it <laughs> by the way by the way guys i since i'm here i this it's been a month since i showed up and i have to bring you the news about what's going on over here too okay because i one, already told one, you that one moment let me let me do one more thing that's connected to this and it, the, the guy that i mentioned at the start of my comment on the real news video bruce ivins Okay, so some people may not remember who he so was. Um, I found an article, I think this is from 2011. Yeah, 2011. Uh, from Pro New evidence adds doubt to FBI's case against anthrax suspect. The FBI still insists it had the right man in Bruce Ivins, an army biologist who committed suicide in 2008 before being charged with the mailings that killed five people. But an in-depth look by ProPublica, PBS, and McClatchy found new evidence challenging the government's claims. This is by Stephen Engelberg. It was published October 10, 2011. This story is a joint project with ProPublica, PBS, Frontline, and McClatchy. story will air on Frontline on October the 11th, you know, six years ago. <laughs> um, Washington, months after the anthrax mailings that terrorized the nation in 2001 and long before he became the prime suspect, Army biologist Bruce Ivins sent his superiors an email offering to help scientists trace the killer. Already, an FBI science consultant had concluded that the attack powder was made with a rare strain of anthrax known as Ames that's used in research laboratories worldwide. In his email, I take things further, he had several variants uh, he said he had several variants of the Ames strain that could be tested in ongoing genetic studies aimed at tracing the origins of the powder 
that had killed five people. He mentioned several cultures by name, including a badge made mostly of Ames anthrax that had been grown for him at an army base in Dugway, Utah. Seven years later, as federal investigators prepared to charge him with the same crimes he'd offered to help solve, Ivins, who was 62, committed suicide. At a news conference, prosecutors voiced confidence that Ivins would have been found guilty. They said years of cutting-edge DNA analysis had borne fruit, proving that his spores were effectively the murder weapon. To many of Ivins's former colleagues at the Germ Research Center in Fort Detrick, Maryland, where they worked, his invitation to test the Dugway material and other spores in his inventory is among numerous indications that the FBI got the wrong man. Would ask the cops to test his own gun for ballistics. To prosecutors who later branded Ivan's investigation, his solicitous email is trumped by a long chain of evidence that they say would have convinced a jury that he prepared the lethal weapons for most biodefense scientists. PBS's frontline McClatchy and ProPublica against Ivan's, conducting dozens of interviews and reviewing thousands of pages of FBI files. Much of the case remains unchallenged, notably the finding that the anthrax letters were mailed from Princeton, New Jersey, just steps from an office of the college sorority that Ivan's was obsessed with for much of his adult life. But newly available documents and the accounts of Ivans's former colleagues shed parade Ivans are at odds with some of the science and circumstantial evidence that the government said would have convicted him of capital crimes. While prosecutors continue to vehemently defend their case, even some of the government's science consultants wonder whether the real killer is still at large. Prosecutors have said Ivans tried to hide his guilt by submitting a set of false samples of his Dugway spores in April 2002. Tests on those samples didn't display the telltale genetic variants later found in the attack powder and in sampling from, Doug from Ivans's Dugway flask. Yet records discovered by Frontline, McClatchy, and ProPublica revealed publicly for the first time that Ivans made available at least three other samples that the investigation ultimately found to contain the crit crucial variants, including one after he allegedly tried to deceive investigators with the April submission. Paul Kemp, who was Ivans' lawyer, said the government never told him about two of the samples, a discovery he called incredible. The fact that the FBI had multiple samples of Ivans' spores that genetically matched anthrax in the letters, Kemp said, debunks the charge that the biologist was trying to cover his tracks. Asked about the sample submissions as well as other inconsistencies and unanswered questions in the Justice Department's case, lead federal prosecutor Rachel Lieber, Lieber said she was confident that a jury would have convicted Ivans. <clears throat> she said in an interview, quote, you can get into the weeds and you can take little shots of each of all these aspects of our vast, you know, mosaic of evidence against Dr. Ivins, end quote. But in a trial, she said, prosecutors would have urged jurors to see the big picture. And she went on and, quote, and ladies and gentlemen, the big picture is you have, you know, brick upon brick upon brick upon brick upon brick of a wall of evidence that demonstrates that Dr. Ivins was guilty of this offense, end quote. Scientists who worked on the FBI's case do not all share her certainty. Claire Fraser Liggett, a genetics consultant whose work provided some of the most important evidence linking Ivans to the attack powder, said she would have voted to acquit. She said, and she is the director of the university, a link to it in the video description for those who want to go ahead and check it out. But the thing is, you know, um, Maybe the person who actually did the deed is still out there and this guy was innocent. Uh, so I don't know what we will find out about this particular investigation involving this guy that they have picked up. Uh, I've seen a couple of videos about it earlier today uh, where he is allegedly a deranged Trump sympathizer, supporter, whatever. So I don't know. Um, but anyway, so what is your news then, um, Union Aerospace? Uh-oh, we may be about to have a problem here. Oh, what's on? Uh, my, uh, my Ethernet is overheating. Uh, crap. Wait, e your Ethernet's overheating? Yes. What? Yeah, it tends to do that whenever I'm doing things at the same time that I shouldn't be doing. What that means is that the stream may go offline, but I should still be able to record. So if you guys go ahead and hang out here with me in the in the stream, we'll be able to go ahead and finish it, and then I can upload it later. Uh, oh, okay. Union uh, Aerospace. Oh, 
Uh, what, what, repeat again because I didn't hear you. You were saying you, Go ahead. what was your story? Oh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, my story is, it's been a month since, uh, since I last joined it and I was last to, that was last time I li delivered the news about what was going on over here in Spain, you know? Over here. Okay. So, uh, what's uh, new going on? The new administration is raising the minimum wage to 900 euros to yeah formerly it was at 600 now they're raising it at 900 which uh, in the first look it looks cool right well that's one of the good news now comes the not so good news. the <laughs> the new administration is gonna pass a law in which uh, in which all of the all of the companies in operating in Spain will be will be punished by several economical fines until they get fifty percent of female bosses. Uh, okay. What? Uh, affirmative <laughs> yes. action. Affirmative action. Affirmative Ooh, action coming from a new administration. Yeah. Also, so there's only a. California here. Yeah, they're pulling. Uh, they're pulling in California. And meanwhile, our college still needs funds, which they're not coming. Also, I heard the first when it, they came in and said we're not gonna sell guns to Saudi Arabia, and now they're going back on that. It's like, oh come on. Yeah, um, you gotta understand our uh, the relationship between the between the how you call it between this royal monarchy. But the, the, the royal family in Spain and the royal family in Arabia Saudi is special. Let's say it that way. Uh -huh. yeah, so the king said that, oh, come on, sell them guns. It's like, why? No, you're not in charge. You're Mr. King. Go back to sitting on your throne and looking pretty. Um, uh, thing is, this, this the is king... why I think monarchy is bullshit. It's like, oh, please look, Mr. Inbred, the blue blooded, quote unquote. You, you're just you just paid to sit on that fucking throne and look pretty, not to annoy us. Thing so is, uh, thing is, the monarchy is. Uh, I consider the monarchy as part of uh, one of the bigger circles of corruption that is going on over here in Spain. If uh, if the king benefits from from the sale, sales of weapons to Arabia Saudi. Then more than one person benefits from sales of weapons to Arabia Saudi, you know, to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. That's uh, how it goes. There's always one bigger than the next one, and we still we still don't get access to the files that uh, are related to the coup d'état of 1978. Not oh, sure yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know, I know. After Franco died, uh, the previous king, uh, the previous king from this one, Juan Carlos, tried to um, reinstate democracy. Well, he succeeded, but uh, before that, uh, the military was like, "Oh no, 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 no! The Francoism needs to stay because otherwise we can't have democracy because we don't." It, yeah, yeah the, it, military, the military doesn't like to lose their privileges, basically. You know, if it they was, run the uh, show, they have to run forever. It <laughs> was a conspiracy built up by the by the by the National Guard of our uh, in order to seize uh, seize Congress, but uh, they're not letting us investigate what is what really happened, and what I really. Call me a conspiranoid, the uh, Czech and Vara. Should I? Can I? Can I call you that? Yeah, Czech and Vara. Czech and Vara. <laughs> call me a conspir a conspiranoid. But I think the coup of 1978 was an inside job. You know what I mean? So they tried to fuck themselves, basically. No, no, no. I mean, a way to legitimize the monarchy in Spain. What better way than the coming the king and coming as the savior of democracy? Yay. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. It it just doesn't make any sense because the king itself even was um, was uh, he didn't denounce the coup straight uh, straight on, you know? He took his time. He took... Yeah, thank thank goodness my country voted the uh, um our monarchy out to basically to get lost. 
What? It's not the first time that the king over here threw his lot with the military. Uh, do you know a guy called Primo de Rivera? Was it was it the king before the republic? The Primo de Rivera was a military dictator who 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 was uh, present by the time of Alfonso XIII's reign. So, the you gotta understand the thing. Why he got in bed with Primo de Rivera? Because there was a there was a report coming out in Congress called the Picasso Report, which was uh, to clarify what the fuck happened in what the fuck happened in Morocco, as we like to call it here. Not sure how we, but Morocco, Morocco. Let's call it yeah, in Morocco. English, right? Yes, we Morocco. War, we had the war in Morocco going on in the twenties, you know, in the tens and twenties, and when one of the battles. We got mobbed. <laughs> we got mobbed by fucking Bedouins. That's <laughs> really mobbed. You're not the only one. Have you, see, have you seen us in Ethiopia? We had to use poison gas to win quickly. <laughs> so the thing is, they whipped us. So, so then Congress asked for a report. And oh boy, the report. The report was uh, p- putting the blame of their disaster on several high-ranking members of the military even going to the monarchy itself. How convenient that before the report could be published, Primo de Rivera comes and stages his coup d'etat. How convenient, right? Yeah. And how convenient that the king throws his lot with the military when when he sees his power, instead of denouncing the... Which is one of the reasons why the monarchy collapsed in 1931, and came the Second Spanish Republic. Dude, dude, my my monarchy, even though King Victor Emmanuel had the army on his side, uh, he, oh yeah, 20 fascists ca- are coming to march us, oh no, let them in, let them make a garment. I, I cannot possibly go against them. Well, why? Oh, because the communists are out there. And uh, you're waiting to just basically kick out democracy because uh, you're afraid of the left. Wow, yeah, this is the reason Apparently. we took them out afterwards. We, we just basically but, told the entire royal family, fuck off for not yeah. having a spine, you bunch of bastards, you doomed our country, go, go away, go <laughs> away, get lost, go away. And we did it by a vote, by the way. We just basically told them no. You fuck Which, off, right? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give this to the last monarch, Umberto. He at least was smart enough to go, yeah, you know what, the people don't want us here, let's just go. He didn't kick a fuss. He said, you know what? Congratulations, you want, I'm leaving. He was yeah, better than his father. His father was a badass uh, idiot. Now, let, let me tell you also a uh, uh, thing about this. Going back to our original topic, uh, I, cannot, I cannot believe that not only the new administration is starting to go bonkers with the whole affirmative action thing, but even the opposition is also starting to go bonkers, you know? Yeah. Because... We have this new jewel, Pablo Casado. Uh, Liviana knows him already. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you know him. But uh, Che, you know who the fuck Pablo Casado is? Uh, the new prime minister? No, 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 no. He's the new, the new leader of the of the popular party. Holy shit, dude! You know what was one of the last things he said? One of the polit- one of the politicians that he should go. Be uh be the president of Andalusia because of the amount of horse he visit he visits there. <laughs> God. Wow, talk about talk about <laughs> being crass. Hey, there are lots of horses there. Uh, you go there. And literally, and like I'm really, what the fuck are you? Are you like fucking thirteen, dude? Uh, the f- the whole political scape in Spain has been turned into one massive kindergarten. You know. Dude, dude. In my country, the two populist parties are too busy bitching at each other and actually running the country. Like Salvini calls Di Maio, you're a big poopy head, and you know Di Maio responds and is like, "Are you guys children or you know leaders of a country?" Hey, we we uh, let me tell people. you what's happening in the political scene here. Now, this is not official politicians, but these are politically. Um, I mean, I don't know really what to call them. They're kind of spurgs. They are uh, drama. Spurgs. <laughs> At least one of them is a drama uh, streamer, right? 
Um, so a couple of these guys who were involved in all the drama that started back in December are going to have a kickboxing, a mixed martial arts uh, bite sometime in January in Knoxville, Tennessee, supposedly. Now, this this is according to a report. Oh, Tonka I haven't... and uh, somebody yeah, else. Tonka, Tonka saw and uh, Andy Worski, right? <laughs> So I mean, this oh, is yeah. this we is were, political we, discourse in the United States in 2018. Political kickboxing. Giovanna, <laughs> Giovanna, Giovanna, we were talking about it. Uh, uh, me, Robin, and, uh, Fluffy, we were talking about it earlier, and then we said, that, "Can you imagine Kevin Logan and Sagan of a Cat doing that in, in the UK? <laughs> Whales just being the fuck out of each other." That'd be fucking beautiful, dude. Bad blocks being the fuck out of each other. It would just be like two wheels oh. trying to wait on the ring. Oh, but mm. by the way, apparently, uh, being a kindergarten in the political landscape is a okay, but playing video games is bad. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, what? I don't get it. It's just crazy. So, um, so I said we were going to talk about Greg Abbott a little bit, Go, uh, governor of Texas. All right, so. Mm. Uh, Back a while back, I think it might have been um, more than a year ago. I I don't remember exactly when, but he tweeted out uh, a bogus quote attributed to Winston Churchill that says, the fascists of the future will be the anti-fascists. Now, there's one problem with that. Well, actually, there are several problems with that. Number one, the quote doesn't seem to have any verifiable source. It is somewhat close to things which were said by other people. Um, so Churchill, according to everything that I've uh, been able to find out about this, he never said that. The quote was first attributed to him in 2010. There is no record prior to that time of him having said it anywhere. Okay, number two, <clears throat> the quote meme became popular after Governor Greg Abbott of Texas shared it on Twitter, and after being told that it was a spurious quote, he deleted the tweet. Greg Abbott, like most of the members of the Texas state government, is a religious jackass willing to use anything to promote the sort of theocratic hellhole that lot want to make of Texas. Him grabbing a quote without verifying it because he thinks it will justify some of the shit he wants to pull is entirely in character for the man. As a native Texan, I can say this with some degree of certainty. The state government is mostly Baptist-ridden, but he himself is a Roman Catholic, as I said earlier. Now, far more interesting are quotes from people who live or lived in nations which were once fascist, such as Mino Macari, a member of the Italian literati who lived through Mussolini's regime. He uh, I think so. I think my grandfather used to talk about him because, obviously, my grandfather was a partisan, which mm -hmm. is why... If you call me a fascist, I'm going to say, excuse me. If I was a fascist, my family would disown me and probably kill me. We fought against Mussolini. We, that's not a very good thing to tell me. Right. So Mino Macari uh, once said, Il fascismo si divide in due parti. Il fascismo propriamente detto e l'antifascismo. Which, for the Italian deprived, that means fascism divides itself in two parts. Fascism properly called and anti-fascism. This was paraphrased by Ennio Flaiano, another uh, member of the Italian literati and also part of the Italian cinematic scene, who also lived through Mussolini's regime. And what he said was, in Italia i fascisti si dividono in due categorie, i fascisti e gli antifascisti. The meaning of that really ought to be obvious even to those of you who are deprived of the glorious Italian language. But I've been told I give people too much credit sometimes, so here's a translation of that too. In Italy, the fascists divide themselves into two categories, the fascists and the anti-fascists. So the so-called Antifa in the United States in the latter half of the second decade of the 21st century is indeed engaging in the use of fascist tactics, and they should be condemned for it. But there are still fascists and neo-fascists roaming about in the United States as well, and they get no pass simply because Antifa is copying their tactics. They will use this copycat behavior in an effort to play victim, and that victim routine will be used as a recruiting tool for the gullible. Every sane person on the left, on the right, in the center needs to grab as many of these fucks as we can, regardless of which side they claim to be on, and lock them up in the county jail where they will be forced to learn how to behave like civilized adults, or, you know, where they can each make a shiv and cut each other to pieces. Either way would be a victory for freedom and sanity. 
Yeah, um, I'll say about this, about uh, fascists becoming anti-fascist, and this is a story my grandpa told me. Um, the guy who tortured him when he was a partisan, he later became a member of the Communist Party. I'm not <laughs> fucking kidding me. They still met each other. The fucking, the fuck? and, you know, it, he was like, you know that guy that, you know, used to tell my grandma, he used to tell my mother, you know that, you know that guy? That fucking guy used to torture me, and my mother just used to just hate that guy. He says, what the fuck? Why did you change sides to avoid getting lynched? He never really believed in fascism. He just wanted this, he just wanted an excuse to fuck with people. Now he's mm-hmm. using communism as an excuse not to get killed, not to you know serve his crimes. I mean, it happened a lot. I'll openly admit, M- many fascists just joined communism, saying, "Oh, I never really believed in it." Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. You never really. You just wanted a fucking excuse to fuck with people. Just admit it. Yep. Wow. So what else? What what else do you guys have uh, to talk about? Anything recently happened that you'd like to share? Yeah, I would like to share something. Um, there's been a bombing. There was a bomb was sent uh, at uh, the league's uh, headquarters. You know, Liga. Uh huh. It didn't explode, but uh, Salvini is using this as like an excuse. Uh huh. Like, oh, what are you gonna do? Because he, he's minister of the interior, and the thing is, next year. Um, there's going to be the European elections, so, so to send MEPs up there. And he wants a majority so he can pass his economic plan, which A, is unconstitutional, and B, his coalition partners who have 32%, and he only has 18%, don't like it. This is why there's a lot of bickering in my government. They're trying to figure out the details before the European elections and... Uh, you know, it's unconstitutional because a flat tax in Italy, it's unconstitutional. You need to have a progressive taxation in mm-hmm. by the, mandated by the Constitution. And they're like, no, we want this flat tax. And then um, just, to, just you know, the reason why they want the flat tax is because the person who pays Salvini, because his funds are frozen uh, due to an investigation of corruption, so him saying I'm an outsider is fucking bollocks, you know, the person who pays him is Silvio Berlusconi. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, this is the kind of reason why he wants this sort of pro-business uh, legislation, which most of it is unconstitutional. Right. And, uh, you know, but part of me is kind of glad Berlusconi is paying him because he's basically telling him to shut the fuck up whenever he goes too far. It's like, dude, you still want to get paid? Yes. Stop it. You're, you're not really doing good for the business community. You're scaring people away. We do not want to lose money because you have a fucking bug up your ass. <laughs> so it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, pro-business legislation. On the other, he basically keeps him, in the, keeps him under a very short leash. So, you know, I'm, eh, we're not in a very good situation either way. So, you know, I kind of want to go back to the previous government. They may have been a little bit neoliberal, but at, at least they're not fucking children trying to run a country and shouting all the time and being assholes. And at least the previous government was fucking, was fucking civilized mm-hmm. compared to the two ages we have here. You know, I call Salvini the, the asshole and Di Maio the enabler because Di Maio just bends the fuck over to do whatever Salvini wants. He has uh, no spine. Well... At least you, you're not the dumping ground of France yet. <laughs> uh, we're going to be that. I guess because the French hate us so much now, we're, we're not going to dignify. I mean, the French... There are some clips of apparently Frenchmen taking some of their refugees and dumping it into our borders. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> yeah. In, I used to have a lot of respect for France, but uh, with the latest shenanigans they've been pulling, I'm like, eat the, eat all of your fucking cheese yourself, you fucking frog. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm really uh, sorry, but uh, if you're gonna treat us like that, go fuck yourself. To be very honest, the Mediterranean is basically the sort of uh, um, the dumping ground. I mean, for fuck's sake, we're very incompetent, we're very corrupt, and we have a lot of debt, so it's kind of like, uh, eh. We're kind of we're kind of poorly treated because we're fucking idiots, uh, you know. But now it's actually the best uh, of it, you know. Yeah, shit tends to fall downward and less fortunate, uh, and in that case, it's us, uh, uh, you know, Italy, Spain, Portugal, and Greece. Well, and also Romania. Uh, at this point, at this point, you know what I would what I would fucking do? I would go with Portugal, Ireland, Greece. 
in Spain. Sit all together. Say like, hey dudes, this whole European Union thing, this is BS. We, maybe we should all just jump out. Yeah, um, are you seeing what's happening with the UK? Are you sure? I mean, at this point, at this point, what would it better be? Go to the unknown or keep serving uh, for the uh, keep serving the interests of French and German banks. Uh, I'd stay with them because at least they know it's one country. Uh, I'll openly admit I'd rather have Germany running my country than my own people. I, we've proven ourselves to be fucking incompetent, and it's like you know what, we we, we cannot we need to be supervised because. Because we are, we can even we cannot even follow our own fucking rules. Even the ones where we have a constitution, our current minister of the interior, who is supposed to look after the law, he wants to break every single fucking article in the constitution. Why? Uh, because I'm in charge. Yeah, you're also in charge of the democracy of a constitutional republic, and you and you have you know you have a duty to the constitution and to the people, not just the, not just the 18% that voted for you. Because that's that's minority rule then. So yeah, look at my government right now. I'm like, you know what? If, if we leave with this with these guys, a economic uh, collapse, and B, I do not want to be left alone with them. Okay? <laughs> don't, don't, yeah, it's like it's like yeah, go away EU, and then you're still and then you're stuck with the lion. Uh, and the EU was basically the guy with the chair keeping the lion away. It's kind of like yeah, you know what? I'll I'll. Even if that guy's mean to me, I'll stay with him because I do not want to be attacked by that lion. There's I mean, you know, one thing. Sorry, but there's one thing being mean. The other one is screwing us royally over. That's a different thing. I think that's more down to us than due to the EU. To be perfectly honest, at this point. Uh, because currently, the former administration has done nothing but prioritize the repay of the ger- of the German debt. If you know what. Yeah, but the French are cheese-eating surrender monkeys, as our British observer Lizzie, Leslie Maxwell has just pointed out in the chat. <laughs> French, French cheese-eating surrender yeah, monkeys. Um, they also have nukes. They, they also have nukes, so yeah, we don't want to fuck with them. I do, I do not want to get nuked, all right? I mean, look, you know, that, they're prioritizing repaying your debt. Um, you know, at, at least paying back your debt is a good thing. I mean, debt that was contracted by the government, by the inversions of the government, which we are all are paying for the for the fuck ups of the government. You know my point? Yeah, um, that, the point is, I mean, at this, you're saying, oh, it's it's the EU. I'm like, thinking, I think it's more of our local government fucking up, and then you know, saying, oh, it's yeah. their fault. What do you mean it's their but fault? We why... to fix the problem. Yeah. You fucked up. What the hell? Like, why do we have to pay for what a pair for a bunch of uh, bankers have fucked up? You know, I, I didn't I mean, invest I in the bank. I didn't invest in my bank. My father didn't didn't invert didn't put some money in the bank. I'm pretty sure thirty million of Spaniards didn't didn't have didn't put any money in the bank. Uh, in terms of buying actions, at least. Or I mean, whatever you call it. I do agree with that, but again, it's not really the EU's fault. The thing is, to, to me, the, it's the thing. Now they're trying to blame all of us, all of us, for their fuck-ups. You know? We should have gone the route to that fucking Iceland did. At least Iceland had the gall, to, had the gall and the balls to tell them, to tell the bankers to fuck. Hey, they are. Gonna, yeah, they arrested, they arrested their bankers. They arrested their bankers. Yeah. yeah. They should, yeah that's that's what okay. I keep saying. I, I I go into the I go into the YouTube Saints Discord sometimes and I yell out in all caps, "Arrest the bankers! Nationalize the Fed! Power to the people!" <laughs> I, I, think, I think it should be within the, every constitution in the world. If the banks fuck up, we nationalize you, and uh, we fucking put you in jail. I, actually, here's the thing. We put you in jail, and you keep running your bank from jail. You're basically our indentured servant. Exactly. It's, it's, I, we it's irony. I would do the same thing towards the wealthy people, to be perfectly honest. It's like, oh, you, okay, you're going to do the same thing. You're basically the indentured servants of the people you fucked over. You get to keep running your company because you're quote-unquote business savvy, but all the profits go to the government, go to the people you fucked over, and if you complain, we're going to execute you. 
It's it's a yeah. lot better than executing them from the start like uh, you know the Bolsheviks did. You fucking put them in jail and you get them to run the business, and you know, uh, then they presumably die in then they presumably die in jail. Which you know, hey, they died in jail from old age. Uh, we didn't kill them. Hey, uh, we we gave them bread, so don't worry, they survived. Uh, the thing is, it's just it's just I'm fucking I'm fucking tired of hearing the germ the Germans argument that the. We don't fucking work. We don't fucking work. Turn it to them. When apparently Germany has the is the one of the countries with more vacations than fucking Spain. Dude, come on. But to be honest, I lived there and I was born there. They're, they're more efficient than my country. Probably, <laughs> and then, but I mean, the, the the problem with this is that you know you're comparing yourself to the reasons they have more. The the reasons they have more. Uh, Holidays, the same reason Japan has more holidays because they're like, oh shit, we need to get these people out of the fucking office. They're working themselves to that. Come on, have a holiday. Oh, now you know, we need to keep working. I mean, they're not automatons, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they have a higher work ethic than uh, uh, us down here. I mean, no, no, I, I agree that they're, they're not automatons. They're, they, have the, they still have the arrogance coming from, from fucking Will in the sect. Hey, now, Wilhelm II was a much better leader than Adolf Hitler. Uh, he still yeah. kind of led his uh, country into bankruptcy. Well, still. Hey, look, Leslie Maxwell now says the EU is sinking and has as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike. <laughs> uh, dude, okay. Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, 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 I would actually reform the EU, but, uh, you know, just, just saying, oh, it's sinking, eh, not really. Let me tell you a thing. At this point, it's not the European Union anymore. It's the, it's the Euro right. Yeah, that's what... Uh, it's dude, the Euro right. Come on, dude, this, is what, this is what all my family and friends in Scotland have called it forever, the Euro right. Uh, come on, you guys. Uh, <laughs> that was really sorry. Look, Union, if it was a dictatorship, you would not be alive right now. You would actually be cut off to a fucking concentration camp. I'm surprised. They though. banned my memes! They banned my memes! They haven't. They haven't. Have you ever actually read the thing? Come on. We, we did a whole open house episode uh -huh. on that. They didn't, they didn't do that. They, they, well, they literally, you know, like, thank you and, and Sargo went there. The first question, oh, are, be are memes going to be legal? And the panel just looked around. Yes, they're not going to be banned. It's not under the purview of this new article. I'm going to say mm. one thing, and this is all I'm going to say about that particular issue, and that is no, I, I shared an article. Or actually, I found an article in an American newspaper uh, last month, I guess it was, maybe earlier this month. It's just a normal local American newspaper. There's nothing particularly nefarious about it. Uh, I went to the archive website, archive.is, to make a copy of it, you know, to archive it so that it would be easier to save as a PDF file on my computer for my personal use, of course. You know, nothing illegal there. That's part of free, fair, uh, fair okay. use law in the United States. So I went to the archive.is site to make an archived copy of it. And guess what happened? The newspaper itself put up a message that said, you're blocked from accessing this because you are in the Eurosphere and will enforce the GDPR law. Well, fuck. Yeah. Cut off there. I mean, I didn't. I didn't make this up. You can actually go. I mean, I posted it in the news and information channel there. So if you want to go look at it, you can see for yourself. You won't be able to open it in the EU. Now, if you use a proxy, maybe you can get it to open. But I don't know. Well, man. Time to activate our proxies to Russia. <laughs> because, <clears throat> fucking shit. I've this also is... I've also been asked to what? promote a blog by a friend of mine, Cindy Matthews. She runs the Bernie blog. Bernie blog. Our revolution continues. Apparently, uh, the. Uh, social media sites and Google search engine are not um, being very nice to them. So uh, their current uh, blog post is called Gone Voting, 
or Gon Bowden, actually, and I'm going to include a link to that in, in the video description as well for those who would like to check it out. I have known Cindy for over two years. She's a good egg. So, you know, go check out her blog and have a look around. There are a few places in there where she uh, has quoted me. In not maybe not in this particular post, but in some of her previous posts, uh, and certainly used some of my information about the Russia Gate stuff <coughs> at some uh, point. Come, Giovanna, on the whole, uh, I couldn't uh, archive it because you know the whole EU thing. Um, I can't see certain videos on YouTube because they're not uh, they're not shared on my country. So you know, it's like eh, this, it, this is what it feels like. You're like, oh fuck, why? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I can't see some videos here either because they're blocked in my country by whomever. But yeah, I mean, it's just really strange because I mean, it's, there it's was a bit annoying. But uh, I mean, I'll, I'll say this: before we had these two articles, Article 13 and the other one. Uh, we used to use American DMCA, and so it's like, uh, I mean, why are, why are Americans complaining about the EU doing this? We used to use your laws. So, you know, hey, your laws are what had me unable to stream on this channel for two weeks because some bogus little dinky Spanish company that was... Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, <laughs> four years ago they set themselves up and they decided they were going to claim the ownership of one of my streams. One of my best streams, it was almost four hours of myself and David on the left and uh, three or four people on the right discussing economic systems. So, of course, we were talking about capitalism and corporatism and neoliberalism and socialism and communism and... Yeah, it was a very good stream, in spite of the fact that a certain person became too intoxicated to carry on a rational conversation. <laughs> even got to the point was where he Mycroft? was slurring his words. Yes, Mycroft it was, who is no longer oh, here and is no longer welcome in my channel after what he pulled with Kraut. I mean, he fucked Kraut over, basically, and I'm not going to have him in uh -oh. here. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm, yeah, I won't, I won't ask. Won't. I don't want to go into the details, but essentially uh, not to be trusted. And uh, so, uh, I mean, he, he got to the point where he was slurring his words, and I just muted him, and eventually he left the stream channel. <laughs> but yeah. it was, other other than the, the, the point at which he was too intoxicated to have a rational discussion, it was a pretty good uh, stream, and then, you know, the rest of us carried on with a pretty good stream after he was muted, so, but I did get it restored, the, I sent the, um, you know, the counter notification, said, this isn't your movie, this is my live stream, this is four of us, or, uh, this is a group of us talking for four hours about economic systems, and so whenever they didn't reply to my counter notification, YouTube restored the video, and took the strike off my account. So I went and renamed the video. What did I call it? Let me see here. Um, <clears throat> it's still called Operation Midnight Climax, which was the name of two movies, two different movies, at least one of which they apparently have the rights to the Spanish language dub of. What? It's not showing up. Why isn't it showing up? Ah, shit. Well, anyway, I renamed it Esta no es su maldita película. I think. Oh, well, the, it does seem like it was an interesting stream in the end. It was, uh, it was a pretty good stream. But yeah, I, I left it named Operation Midnight Climax, and then in parentheses I said in Spanish, this is not your damned movie. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, you're not the first one to be struck uh, struck by somebody else. Uh, no, attacked. yeah, I know. The, there, there are several. This particular company has hit several people for uploading the English language version of a movie, which is in the public domain, but they own the Spanish language dub to it. So they tried to get it taken down, and it's like. I mean, what, what life has taught me is that when there is a new law being made, somebody's going to try to abuse it. So it's like, oh, Article 13, yeah, yeah somebody's going to, you know, people say, oh, but this could be abused. So is the DMCA, so is the law about murder, so is the law about rape. Somebody's always going to try to find a loophole. I know, my country, we're the experts of finding loopholes. I mean, 
we were jo- I was joking about with my friend a few months ago. We were at the railway station, and he said, you know, you could actually, you could, there was the last carriage of the train, and then you had the door being closed with the, you know, lock in there. So he said, I could just ride in there, and then if the uh, guard came along, he said, hey, I'm not breaking the law. I'm not inside the train. I'm hanging outside. <laughs> So there you go. You, you know, we were joking, but some people, you know, you could act, you know, if you think about it, hmm, I could actually try using that excuse. And, you know, yeah. I'm definitely not breaking the law. I'm, you know, you're bending the law, but you're not breaking it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm kind of like, guess, yeah. I guess <laughs> what really gets me mad about Article 13 is the fact that it was decided by a bunch of, a bunch of people who cannot even open their PCs correctly. <laughs> You know, so, that's so the great. Dude, that's have you the... seen the UK? The, have you seen the British anti-porn laws? Sound like somebody. Oh my! Them. I was like, God, guys, I lo- I love that they were the ones who complained the most. It's like, so the country with the harshest porn laws, the most restricted internet, uh, CCTV cameras, and a very draconian mentality when it comes to morality, is complaining about this. This compared to the, your internet legislation is nothing. I mean, if you ask Robin, if you ask Fluffy, if you ask Grim, they'll tell you, fuck, no, this was nothing compared to what we have here in the UK. I mean, in the UK, the UK is a very special land, and not for the good name. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what are you yeah, asking? What are you asking, too. Leslie? He said, wait, what? What, what? Meme Fuji. He's calling himself a meme Fuji, and then a few minutes later he asked, "Wait, <laughs> what?" Meme Fuji. Yeah. A <laughs> meme Fuji. Yeah. This is a this is a thing they have in um, several of the people in YouTube Saints Discord server gave themselves meme Fuji names, apparently because they're in Europe and are like, no, we can't, you know. <laughs> you can yeah, the thing. Memes. The, the article has been passed, and I can still use memes. Nobody cares. I mean, I mean, they even, don't have the means. Even if somebody reports me, the, the police is going to be like, uh, uh, this isn't in the article. No, nobody's met. So, you know, you're oh. just wasting my, you just our fucking time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, we, can, we can be happy that there's no, f- the means to enforce such an article don't exist yet. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that the article basically said that it's up to the member states to choose how harshly to enforce it. So you, you could have states where they just don't care. It's like, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, we passed the article, don't worry. And then you barely enforce it because, you know, yeah, bad things to do. So, I mean, for all its flaws, this is kind of a good idea. I mean, not really, because then you have states with maybe draconian laws and then states with not so it's a bit it's basically like in america where you have some states that allow alcohol and then the next 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 state over you can't drink it which you know it just means people just travel a lot oh you can drink in any state in the united states but the laws as to how old you have to be used to be a bit unusual they were not in any way standardized and now i'm pretty sure you have to be 21 in every state but no, like, I was saying because I know that there are some dry counties. Dry counties, the yes. You can drink. I'm in a dry county right now. I've got a bottle of rum, a bottle of bourbon. Uh, yeah, I've got a bottle of rum, a bottle of bourbon, a bottle of vodka, and at least a couple of bottles of uh, Moscato. So th- does that mean uh. you just can't buy alcohol in a certain day? You can't buy it in this county. You have to go outside the county and bring it back, and there's a limit on how much you can bring back in any one trip because otherwise they're afraid you're bootlegging or some shit like that. Uh, okay, so uh-huh. yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. It's essentially next county over, you can just buy booze. So, yeah. you know, the whole dry thing doesn't really work. It's you're like, so your next to a county that has, uh, you know, that it, it, you're next to a wet country. What does, oh yeah, but you know you just have to go there and buy it. So what the hell is the point? Well, it, well it's, it's over well, an hour. Know. It's over an hour drive one way for me to get to the closest liquor store or bar. We don't have bars here either. And this is another thing. That, that there have been studies done that show that dry counties there are more DWI arrests because people go to the bars and then they go home. 
drunk, right? They drive home. <laughs> so, I mean, it's kind of not a very good law. Uh, and it's, I personally, it's a if people can still drink. I, I mean, personally believe that it is a violation of the non-establishment clause of the First Amendment because the real reason that this is done in these various counties is because the fucking Baptists don't want anybody drinking. But yet, I've never. And you see, I used to be a Baptist. Um, my family, my parents were Baptists. They didn't raise me as a Baptist. I was raised free to choose my own path. But you know, I was uh, I was in the church for a while, and so uh -huh. uh, we visited a lot of other people who were in the church. My parents would play cards with them and stuff like that. You know, they would have a game night once a week or so. And I've been in a lot of people's houses. I have never ever in my life been in another Southern Baptist house where there wasn't at least one bottle of something hidden somewhere in the kitchen, usually under the sink. I was a nosy little bitch. Uh, I would dig Giovanna, around. I, I've been to uh, Muslim countries. I've seen them drink. Yeah. There, it's like, it's like, come on, guys. Just, <laughs> stop pretending. You like it. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I'm a guy who doesn't drink. I'm not going to judge if you drink. I'm only going to judge if you get drunk and you start beating people up in the bar. Because it's kind of like, okay, come on. You're causing a nuisance now. Yeah. Go do it outside. <laughs> Come on, don't yes. fight in the bar. Go outside. You're 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 causing a nuisance for the other patron. Come on, go go beat the crap out of somebody. Go beat the crap out of each other outside. Boy. Yeah. Because if <laughs> it's outside, it's not the bar's problem. Right. Uh huh. Well. But yeah, I mean, though that uh, whole uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of silly, you know. It's like so you have a dry country next to a wet country. Um. You do know people are just gonna drive to. We just want don't want to in our backyard. Why? Mm. I mean, it, if you don't want drinking in your house, that's fine. But what? You know, who are you to tell other people what to do? Exactly. If you, don't, if you don't want, if you don't want to drink, don't go to the bar. I don't drink. I don't go to the bar. Don't solve my problem. I don't smoke either. There you go. Don't. I don't. Yeah, the only thing I'm annoyed with smokers is when they blow smoke into my face. It's kind of like, oh, come on, for fuck's sake, don't do that. But that's it. I don't mind being next to them. Oh, mercy. Oh. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's what my attitude is. If you don't want to drink, you're perfectly within your rights to refrain from doing so. But you don't have the right to tell me that I can't, right? Yeah, same I mean, thing. Like, you can drink as much as you want just as long as you don't bully me into drinking. Because I, I, I'm really annoyed with the people who say, oh, why don't you drink? Because I don't like to. Oh, you should. No. Oh, you should. You know, it's like peer pressure. It's like, for oh, fuck's sake, leave me alone. I don't want to drink. It's that annoying. It, it, it's not really like, you know, you're kind of saying, you know, I just want pro prohibition just to fuck with you. Just like, ah, yeah, you can't. now you can't drink. Uh, yeah, but I uh, know I'm totally against prohibition. It doesn't work. Uh, and, uh, you know, people should be allowed to get drunk because then I, I can just sit there and take pictures of them because that's the one advantage of being sober. You just get to see the other people doing all the fucked up shit whilst they're drunk and then tell them, see, you did this last night. You might want to, you might want to, like, you might want to be more, a bit more careful last night. I mean, next time, sorry. Um, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. But yeah, I never understood the whole idea of oh, we don't we don't want to see people drinking. Okay, then don't drink. Mm -hmm. You can bring you can. I don't have booze in my house, but you can bring it just as long as you then throw, as a, just as long as you then throw the empty bottle in the fucking trash, because I just don't like having empty bottles running around my house. Yep, yep. Well, you know when I used to. Um... In the years between when I got my bachelor's degree and then went on to go to graduate school, I got a job at a pizzeria, and I was working there uh -huh. to make some money. I bought a new car, you know, that kind of stuff. And I had a lot of friends who were still in school, and there, there were two colleges, two universities in the town, one of which was a Baptist school. So the people I knew from there, you know, you couldn't have alcohol in the dorms you couldn't you weren't allowed to be intoxicated on campus and, and stuff like that so i'd get off from work and some of them would start showing up and they would bring bottles and we would start drinking and more often than not they would wind up leaving what they had so i 
collected a nice little collection of liquor. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it was uh-huh. it was very advantageous for me. <laughs> uh, in a sense, it seems. <laughs> oh, well. well, besides of that, besides of this uh, kind of debate, anything else uh, we can also discuss, or anyone has any anything else, basically. I was hoping maybe Cindy might join us, but I don't, she's new to Discord. I don't think she knows yet that I've sent her a PM. So. Oh well, maybe maybe she'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, maybe, 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 right? <clears throat> so let's see. I don't know what else is going on in the world. I haven't actually. Um, I've been Have you a heard bit. Of the uh, Saudi assassination of that guy. Oh yeah. I, I forgot what. Yeah. The... Oh yeah. The, the thing that happened in Turkey. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I love the fact that uh, it's it's kind of like uh, I think they hired the American mercenaries to do it. So. American mercenaries. Uh, yeah, I I read I a really story. So. In... Go on. Hold on, I see if I can, no, I can't find it. Maybe I'll I'll try to find it. But uh, yeah, I mean, to me, the funny stuff is like I think I think Trump said a comment about it. It's like, oh, that's the worst cover up in the world. And I'm like thinking, dude, that's something you say to someone who wears a shitty shirt. Love, that's the worst cover up in the world. I mean, personally, I love the reactions Trump Trump has to some things. It's kind of like, dude, you're so uncouth when it comes to something else. You know, at least be a little bit more eloquent. I don't mind the snarky guy, at least. But if he makes me laugh, then I don't care. But you're, it, it's just, to me, the main problem with Trump is that he's so upfront and so arrogant and so boorish. It's kind of like, dude, come on, just. At least have a little bit of class. Yeah, know? he's very <laughs> unpolished. <laughs> yeah, learn sarcasm. You know, I wouldn't mind someone who was sarcastic if, you know, it kind of made me laugh. And it's kind of like, yeah, it's a bit snarky. I mean, Hitchens was also very upfront, but he was fucking eloquent. At least he could at least articulate something. Trump just, I don't know, he just doesn't do it. It's not his thing. Well, yeah, he's very well, rude fine. and, and un- un- unpolished and coarse. Uh, it's uh, it's like sand. It's rough and coarse. <laughs> and it gets everywhere. <laughs> and uh, brown. No, not brown. Uh, orange. Orange, yeah. Sand is orange. <laughs> yeah. That time when fucking memes of Star Wars are more funny than anything else, really. But yeah, I mean, that's uh, one of my points of contention. It's, it's kind of like, come on. you know, I say he's like Berlusconi, but now whenever he opens his mind, it's kind of like you're kind of a cheap version of Berlusconi because even he at least knew when to keep his mouth shut and <laughs> uh, wasn't as coarse. I mean, I, I've seen some of his some of Berlusconi's speeches, and yeah, he is an asshole and he is coarse, but. He at least knew when to zip it. Kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to comment on this. <clears throat> he doesn't go out of his way. Oh, yeah, but, you know, hey, remember, I'm the smartest person on earth. I'm a very, you know, my penis is very big. You know, it's like, dude, stop it. Uh, according, to Stormy, according to Stormy Daniels, his penis looks strange and like a mushroom. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, why do I need to know that? Uh, have, you seen, have, you, have you seen what you called her? You're a horse face. It's like, uh, t- you, come up with, you can't even do an insult right, Trump. Okay, <laughs> jab low energy tonight. Okay, that made me laugh. But for fuck's sake, at least come up with a better insult for people. You I, know? Th- I thought little Marco, uh, little Marco was a pretty good insult. <laughs> I mean, Churchill was like, you know, somebody, you know, somebody, some woman told him, you're drunk, Mr. Churchill. And he said, yeah, I'll be sober tomorrow. You'll still be out. <laughs> like, I- that at least... Funny, at least yeah. that's funny. There you go. Why, why can Trump be like church when it comes to humor? At least there you go. Be like, at least in the future we will go. Yeah, he might be an asshole, but at least he could fucking joke with people. I, I like I said, I think Little Marco was pretty funny, and and Lion Ted and Crooked Hillary. <laughs> 
What did you say he called um, Jeb low energy? Yeah, low energy. To, <laughs> no, more energy tonight. Damn. I mean, but yeah, like I said, it's kind of like if he was like a bit like Churchill when it comes to insults, then I, I'd be a little, it's kind of like, yeah, at least he can fucking have insults. At least he has, a, you know, because the way someone speaks is kind of a window of, uh, you know, how they think. And Trump, uh, I mean, he has very simple thoughts, but that's the thing. He doesn't really think things, 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 things through. This is why his insults aren't exactly the best uh, in many occasions. But, you know, it, it's kind of like, come on, dude, at, at least make me laugh. Bush made me laugh. He was a fucking idiot, but at least he made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's my problem. Like, this guy, he's not only arrogant, but he doesn't make me laugh. That's the thing. Like, if you can be uh, arrogant but snarky or stupid, at least I can sort of give you a little bit of a pass. But if you're just plain arrogant eh, and you keep boasting yourself for putting yourself on a pedestal, then uh, no, I hate you because you're such an arrogant fuck. You basically <laughs> represent everything I hate about humanity. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 since we were, since I mentioned Ennio Flaiano earlier uh, in the stream, my copy of, uh, what is it called, Solitudine, where the hell is the name? Anyway, it shipped, so it should be here sometime right. next week, yay. Huh. Oh yeah, ah, la, a... la solitudine, la solitudine del satiro. Hmm. I was gonna say, I remember just something. Who here knows The Witcher? The Witcher uh, game? Do, the games and or the books, just the franchise in general. I don't know the the books, but I've heard of the game. Uh, You've heard I, of the game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, but I haven't played it. Well, you don't need to know the game for what I'm telling you this. The author of the Witcher books is uh, suing CD Projekt Red. See. Why? Because it's a, it's a funny story. I'll try to make it as short as possible, okay? Okay. Because initially, his books were not that known. So CD Projekt came along and said, hey, you want to you want to say you want to you want to give the games the give us the you know the license to make games based on your work we'll pay you very good we'll pay you all royalties and whatever so he had two options either go with uh, cheap quick cash right or go with a more long term but more filled with revenue thing if the games went well the guy didn't have any faith in the game, so he went for the cheap way. So, what, what do you know? The games are a massive success, and now he wants to sue them in order to collect 16 million euro dollars. Well, then he can go fuck himself. I mean, he can go fuck himself, but apparently there's a law in Polish, uh, in the Polish um, Code of Laws, or whatever you call it, in which uh, if an author is not paid enough for that, he can sue. Something strange about it. So he has some legal basis. One of the things that actually infuriate. Because he didn't have any faith in the games. Any. At all. That is why he sold cheap. And now he's fucking crying because uh, he, he doesn't get the rest of the cake. Gosh. <laughs> what a, let me tell you a thing. What a fucking asshole. Really. What a... Oh, God. Like, the thing is, it's so fucking funny, but at the same time, it's so infuriating. You know? mm -hmm. But at the same time, let me tell you a thing. CD Projekt has fuck you money. You know what? They have a lot of money. Yeah, they have... The Witcher 3 is one of the most sold games of all times in the history of video games, and it's still selling to this day. They have, uh, the guys on CD Projekt is swimming in money. The company is swimming in money. So I'm, I'm, I don't think anything serious is going to come out of it. 
It's not gonna affect the release of Cyberpunk 2077. Oh wait, I found a new uh, uh something in the news. This is from yesterday, and this is also from the Houston Chronicle. Let me get this open. It looks like it might be interesting. <clears throat> If it will open, la di da di da di da. Come on, open, 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 open. Okay. So, according to an AP source, Defense Secretary Mattis is expected to sign an order to send at least 800 troops to the U.S. Mexico border. This was published yesterday. Uh, oh, yeah, I've, I've heard that. So, it's like, so you're basically dumping an army on the border. You do know the Mexican government is going to go, why are you doing this? No, well, that's it all it says, to too. There's no actual story here. The The story consists of uh, one sentence. Washington AP, AP source, Defense Secretary Mattis expected to sign order to send at least 800 troops to U.S.-Mexico border. Well, that's a big nothing burger for a, a news article. My goodness. I mean... There has been a lot of talk about this big caravan that's supposed to come over. Yeah. For bad hombres. I'm like thinking that's... You, I mean, if you're putting troops on the border for that, I'm like thinking that that's a bit excessive. These are people who yeah. are largely coming from Honduras. Now, Honduras uh, was subjected to a military coup a few years back that was backed by the United mm -hmm. States, of course, because the United States is always fucking with <laughs> Latin America. Um, so... Uh, as a result of that, the uh, situation in Honduras is now like massive amounts of murder. Uh, they wanted to turn it into an objectivist paradise based on Ayn Rand's nonsense. And it's a, it's a dystopian death hole. I mean, it's a shithole. Uh, and yeah, so they, people are leaving they, they because they don't want to get killed, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like uh, the whole uh, refugee crisis in uh, Europe and the what the UK has been saying about it. It's kind of like, didn't you guys go with the Bush in Iraq to fuck over the country? Now you're complaining that the ref that, that shit has fallen over mm -hmm. and it's coming towards us. As like, oh yeah, but all of these, fo as like, sorry, Britain, I have no sympathy for people who go down kicking people's door, destroying their houses and then complain that the... Uh, the homeless people are not coming over to basically say, hey, can we stay in your house since you fucked over ours? Yeah, I exactly. mean, if it was up to me, all those refugees would have to go to America and Britain. It's like, sorry, you guys fucked this over. You guys handle the shit. Because <laughs> sick of it. But, but, you know, I, this is why I, I'm losing faith in America and the UK, because basically, oh, yeah, the shit is coming over here. Let's vote for... Uh, uh, you know, xenophobic, uh, isolationist assholes to build a wall around the country because we don't want to deal with it. It's like, I'm sorry. Uh, and Trump, like, actually, oh, yeah, but... Trump actually said that it was the job of those governments to keep their people inside their borders. Now, this is the guy who wants to build a wall across our southern borders. So what do you think that means? Is he going to... I mean, walls are not built to keep people out. They're built to keep people in. Yeah, I mean, again, what I find annoying is this whole mentality. And people are saying, "Oh, yeah, but when we voted for Bush or Blair, we didn't, we didn't think that they were going to do." It. Oh, yeah, that that's the excuse. You vote them in, and then you basically let them do whatever the fuck they want. So it's like, um, I'm sorry, uh, pester them until they fucking stop with the stupid idea. <laughs> You know, if you can't shoot them, at least fucking annoy them by just stalking and say, stop with this bullshit, do not go into Iraq. Oh, but this guy told me, yeah, Bush, you fucking listened to God, they told you that there are WMDs there. Uh, spoiler, there aren't. And, you know, you know, Tony, it's like, Tony, come on, just give him the finger and say, I'm not, I'm not going with you. Like, if the British had done what the rest of Europe did and just said, we're not coming... I would have more respect for them it's because it's kind of like, hey, they told the Americans they weren't coming. They didn't go with them. So, you know. Well, that was but, Blair. You know. I mean, Tony Blair was the person who turned labor into Tory light. Yep. So, I mean, and... fortunately, the Tory party never, I mean, fortunately, the Labor Party never revised its charter and bylaws to prevent any kind of reform or takeover. So Jeremy Corbyn has a chance to restore it to what it was, 
uh, which was a leftist, sort of leftist party, I mean a labor party. The United States doesn't have uh, a labor party, and we never have. We've, uh, we've never had a leftist party in power. The closest we ever came was when FDR was president, and he was really a centrist, just slightly left of center. Um, but the Democratic Party in the United States has always been associated with, I mean, it started out as associated with the landed gentry and then quickly became also the party of the town merchants. And uh, until 1992, it had become the party of the of small business. And now, since um, Coelho and Bill Clinton, it's become essentially identical to the Republican Party in every way, except just um, a different I, name. Well, I believe that the Labour Party in the UK started as a labour union. I'm not mm -hmm. really quite sure, but yeah, they originally, originally, originally the UK had the Whigs, which then became the Liberals, which then became Lib Dem, Liberal Democrats. And the Tories have always been the Tories. You know, they used to be called the Conservatives, then the Tories, then the Conservatives again, but yeah. they just called the Tories because it's a little bit easier to say. But Labour sort of started out as like the sort of third party, but then became the second party, and the Lib Dems just sort of uh, became the third party, which is what they are now. I try to explain um, to Robin and uh, Kraut that the Democrats and the Republicans are the same, and they don't really understand. I've been told I should tell them that basically what we have are Tories and Lib Dems. There is no Labour Party here, and there isn't. The um, Democrats have uh, never I'll been... I'll say this. The, the Lib Dems are more left-wing than the um democrat probably yeah i mean yeah, so i mean, if you, I mean policies, if you look back to 1973 you... the the democratic party revised its charter and bylaws in an effort to prevent any kind of reform or takeover so that the establishment would always stay in power and to this day i mean 1972 the year before that was the last time a progressive was nominated for president by the democratic party and that's why they did this Okay, I'm just looking at oh, the uh, Liberal Democrats, their platform. Uh, I mean, they're uh, obviously liberal when it comes to sort of po social policies. So they, um, you know, support, uh, uh, they support constitutional and electoral reform. So getting rid of the first past the post system. Uh, they're pro for progressive ta taxation, human rights, uh, banking reforms, and civil liberties. So. I I do think they're slightly more li yeah. libertarian ish. I'm not really sure on economic policy. They're 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 not really laissez faire, but they don't want to over you know regulation as well because you can also sort of transit economy by just putting so many so much freaking red tape, nobody can do anything. But uh, they they do sort of they do they're very so they're sort of more left wing towards uh, social policy. So they do support uh, helping the poor. They do support uh, the welfare state. Uh, well, that's more uh, leftist. Labor, that's more leftist than our Democratic Party for sure. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was saying. I mean, there's they're sort of like uh, Labour is sort of quote unquote left wing. Uh, Lib Dems are center center left, and then the Tories are just right wing, and UKIP uh, the UK are far right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, they're the one party right now, well, them and the Greens, who do support a set, sort of a people's vote, basically. You know, Brexit has fucked up so badly, should we just ask the people, do you still want to go through with this? Because uh, we're not sure we can pull this off. So they're, they're one of the few parties who's advocating for it. It's like, look, let's keep, look, the will of the people, let's at least check if they still want to go through with this, because that was two years ago. And now, look, I'll, I'll say this. The Tories have fucked this up really badly. They really fucked this up. I mean, they, they went in with a paper, with a pencil and a, notebook, and a notebook and said, we can fucking do this in a week. Two years later, they still don't have a plan. And I'm like, oh, God, come on, guys. Come on, you guys. Bonnie is fucking <laughs> showing you how it's done. He came in with stacks upon stacks of boxes of treaties and paperwork. It's like, yeah, you're going to have to deal with all this stuff. And uh, David Davis, who is now threatening to close the UK airspace and shoot down anyone. In case <laughs> you know, no, he said that. He said that we should just over 200, uh, uh, over 200 uh, uh, nautical miles or aeromiles, as he calls them, around uh, around British uh, 
sovereign land, which also means Gibraltar, the bases in Cyprus and the, you know, the islands uh, around uh, the Pacific, uh, Indian Oceans and the Atlantic, as well as